Hi everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to show you how to use chalk style paint and a sandpaper to create a distressed style effect on furniture. So I made a mistake. I painted my farmhouse metal bistro style chairs copper a few weeks ago and while I love the copper rose color alone, I did not like it with the table that I currently have in my dining room. I don't want to paint the table because it's a beautiful wood, so the only other option was to paint the chairs again. So as I stared at it for a long time, I just didn't like that the chairs didn't contrast the table enough and that they were like a similar tone but just off a little bit and it just drove me crazy. So I decided to give my farmhouse bistro chairs another paint job. So even though this was a mistake on my part, I'm kind of happy because I got to do a video here for you guys about spray painting and making a nice spray paint finish and now I get to do a video for you on how to do a distressed farmhouse paint finish with chalk style paint so it's kind of a blessing in disguise and I know a lot of you wanted to see these chairs in a more distressed white color so let me show you how to give your furniture a distressed style makeover let's get started so for this makeover I'm using Rust-Oleum's chalked paint in linen white. I've used this chalk style paint lots before and I really like how it goes on and how it wears. They sent me a few cans to try out on my chairs. So to apply this paint on my chairs I'm just using a natural bristle paintbrush and I'm just putting it on the chairs in relatively even strokes. You don't really have to worry too much about brush strokes when you're doing a distressed style look on chairs like this because you kind of want to give it that rustic more textured look. I realize how ironic this is considering the first spray paint job I did I was really making sure to make it smooth. This one I'm making it look a little more rough and distressed. You basically just want to make sure all your strokes are going in the same direction so on the legs I'm stroking up and down on the seat uh, from front to back and just making sure you don't paint over the same spot too many times to give it a really really rough texture so basically just painting every single nook and cranny on these chairs with this white paint it covers pretty well so I did this first coat and then I only did one more coat and the white covered the copper rose color quite well I was pretty happy with the coverage of this paint so here's how all of my six chairs looked after coat number one of the chalked paint. You can see, you can still see the strokes in the chairs and some of the copper underneath. I didn't worry too much about the undersides of the chairs because I just wanted that really rustic look that these have been hand painted and they've been sitting in a barn for years. I really wanted that effect on these chairs for this time. So now after that coat has completely dried, I gave it about three hours, I went ahead and put on my next coat of chalked paint. Same kind of thing, just made sure my strokes were nice and even. And here's how the second coat looks on all of my six bistro chairs. So two coats really did the trick. If I wanted an even better coverage, I would have done three, but again, I'm going for more of a distressed look. Next I took a sanding sponge, I believe this is 100 grit, the sanding sponge, and then I went ahead and sanded everything lightly on my whole chair just to kind of really make it nice and smooth. And then all I did was sanded down the parts of the chair that I wanted to look distressed and I wanted that bit of copper paint to show through. So when you're doing this, you just have to think about where your piece of furniture would naturally wear uh, if it was sitting somewhere over time. So the corners of the furniture, the edges of the furniture, really anywhere that would naturally rub off. Then I'm taking a tack cloth, that's a really sticky sort of cloth to get all the dust and all of the uh, debris off of my chair after I sand it. So I sanded the front corners of the seat. I'm sanding the raised parts of the design of the chair. So where it's raised here on the legs, I'm sanding all around the edges. And I actually really liked how the copper paint showed through the white. So really it ended up really nicely that I could get both that copper sheen showing in the distressed parts of the chair, as well as the white color that I was hoping for to contrast better with my dining room table. So this probably took me the longest time to do. It just was a lot of elbow grease to get all the parts sanded that I wanted to but in the end I was really happy with how this distressed look turned out on these chairs. Just make sure that you let your layers of paint dry really really thoroughly before you sand and that's going to give your chair the look that you want. 
Finally, I used this chalked matte clear protecting top coat to finish off my chair. So this just makes the chair nice and smooth. It makes it so that the paint stays on the chair, which I know is also a little ironic because I do have this really chippy, distressed look, but it just prevents the paint from transferring to people's clothes and everything and just keeps everything nice and smooth and in place. I was really happy with how that looked on the chairs and I really liked the matte finish. It didn't have any gloss or sheen at all to give even more of a rustic effect. So if you want to see how these chairs look with my table now, stay tuned because on Saturday I'm going to share my fall tablescape including these new chairs. Thanks so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this new color for my chairs. And don't forget that we all make mistakes and it's okay to try something and decide you don't like it and just do it again. A lot of times you're gonna learn stuff along the way. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas. And I'll see you guys all again in my next video. Bye.